All right. Hey, Daphne. Uh, for everyone tuning in, this is Daphne Prieto. He uh, is a professor at the UM Frost School of Music. Uh, he's won a MacArthur Fellowship grant. Uh, he's also Grammy Award nominated and in plays with artists such as Michelle Camilo, Chucho Valdez, and a ton of others. Uh, his previous book is A World of Rhythmic Possibilities, but today we're going to be talking about his brand new book called Rhythmic Synchronicity, which you can see as his virtual background. Um, yeah. So, Daphne, welcome. Hey, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, How's really it going, Daphne? I'm doing good. Thank you. Thank you. I hope you guys are staying uh, safe and sane. Yeah, we were chatting actually just before we hit record about how he's dealing with teaching at UM with with rhythm, having to do it virtually, uh, and some of the struggles with that. Um, yeah, so, yeah, definitely yeah. want to maybe talk a little bit more about that. Yeah, just one one of the of the challenges specifically in this course is that the course is is really focused on on the on the on the synchronicity which is, you know, the ability of not only synchronize within yourself, but synchronize with your peers and being able to, uh, you know, to share uh, simultaneously uh, uh, rhythms and, and, and being able to, to see and hear and sense. And that's, you know, that, that possibility, uh, it gets a little bit reduced by, you know, by doing it online because there is a certain, uh, you know, a time of, of latencies. Uh, yeah. of 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 the of each program so um there is no program that has it a hundred percent yet that we can actually play uh you know in life uh online and we can synchronize so the the so the re the, the the core of the course is really to do it live uh you know with other colleague but you can also you know do it and practice it you know, uh, by yourself, that's, that's always, um, but by yourself is it, 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 it implies a different level of, of, um, of coordination of independence, because then you will have to actually be playing like two rhythms simultaneously, which sometimes is kind of challenging, mostly, uh, for, I mean, for, for everyone is challenging, uh, but you know, mostly for people that are non drummers, because this course, I created this course was created um, do it upon the, the reflection that many non drummers uh, musicians and students in this case at Frost School of Music they were having you know they they were having some challenges with rhythm they you know they they don't you know uh, they wanted to improve their, their, their rhythmic ability and, and I wanted to to help them basically so what I did, I, I started organizing, you know, a lot of, you know, ideas and, and things that I've been working on before and things that I've been recommending to other colleagues and stuff like that. And uh, and then, you know, I, I talked to the chair, uh, John Daversa, who is the chair of the mm -hmm. of the Frost School, and, and, and he approved the idea of, of, of starting this course, which was very well needed for all the students. And... Um, and we end up doing it, and, and and we've been doing it for now about two or three years already, and it has been working really well, uh, improving you know uh, non drummers the rhythmic ability, uh, you know to play with confidence and to play that like, make them feel you know secure and 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 kind of in, enjoying the rhythmic aspect of their playing, which is to me, you know uh, a very important. Being a drummer myself is a very important. So I'm trying to, in a way, you know, I try to joke, uh, you know, with some colleagues. They say, "Yeah, you're trying to fix people that to pl that play with you, so you can play your all all that stuff that you play." <laughs> I mean, I don't see anything wrong with that, uh, <laughs> but I, I definitely relate to what you're saying because I I even feel that in my own musical abilities, I got so much instruction from my teachers when I went to college at at UNF, and I'm a guitarist. Um, mm -hmm. On the on the harmonic side of things, so some of the stuff you talk about in your book that you that you were seeing with your students, where they get so much instruction on on different harmony and and melody, but if unless they're a drummer, they're really not exposed to so much rhythm. Um, you know, what are the differences between different claves? Luckily, you know, we're from Miami, mm -hmm. so we get a little bit more exposure. But even still, like one of the questions um, we have questions about different claves and and when to use them that we can talk about later um, after we get maybe a little bit deeper into your 
course and the book and some different mm -hmm. uh, levels and exercises. But um, it's definitely definitely a topic I relate to just personally. Yeah, sure. I think it's very helpful. And I think it's important to have something written, organized, that that it aims, you know, to for that goal uh, so that people can look at it and something that is updated. You know, there, there, mm -hmm. there are a few um, other uh, books out there, but they're more focused on how to to read, mm -hmm. how to read rhythm. This is not about how to read rhythm. This is about how to make them feel good. This is about being get, creating an awareness and a, and a real understanding of how it works and how you're going to uh, place. Basically, the the whole idea uh, to me it comes from the fundamental of placing rhythms on top of subdivisions. Hmm. So, as long as you're playing on a steady pulse, you can you can really see the matrix of rhythm uh, in the subdivision. So you choose certain subdivisions and then you place those rhythms uh, or those patterns on top of those subdivisions. So that 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 just photographic, mm -hmm. the photographic idea of it, it helps you to comprehend that uh, you're not just, you know, clapping or placing rhythms up in the air like, yeah. like like killing bees, uh -huh. you know, like killing flies or something, right? Or mosquitoes down here in Miami. Exactly. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, so that's the idea um, that 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 then you would go from within the subdivision to create this, uh, you know, more confidence and, and powerful, uh, you know, feeling uh, and and on on the rhythm. So that's that's basically you know the core of it, which to me is the most important part of it. Yeah, I like one of the things that you started with in the introduction on the book, even just basically talking about the difference between uh, duplet or triplet subdivision, mm -hmm. and then how that could be seen in the different uh, time signatures or how they can be the same thing, but maybe written differently. Um, and yes. I think that's one of the things, I'll, I'll have you explain it, but I think that's one of the things that maybe a course that's just focused on reading, maybe it focuses so much on that and not on the aspect that they feel the same. Because yes. so much on yeah. that, yeah. Yeah. Well, in that is particular example, and, 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 and that's, that's great that because that's the very fundamental mm -hmm. uh, thing that, you know, to clarify to many students uh, in rhythm. Like, for example, if you place straight eighth notes in a 12A uh, measure, uh, which basically means that you play in uh, each beat uh, three um, eighth notes. So it's that's equally to a triplet in a 4-4, four four, the sound of it. Mm -hmm. So it's very important to see that how it correlates because sometimes, you know, I have asked a student, okay, play just eighth notes, straight eighth notes uh, on a 12-8, on a 6-8, eight, eight, right? Mm -hmm. In the triplet uh, poles. And they do it fine, you know, and then I say, okay, play a triplet, eighth notes in a 4-4 four four. and then it, it they just kind of or, or becomes they become a little bit hesitant or become a little bit like like they don't know where to place it or vice versa you know they they can place it well in the 4-4 four four. and i say but it's the same outcome uh, rhythmically you, it, it is really you know the space between one beat and the other that's that's really what we can manage how do you have them like count those differences in rhythm to, or how, how would you show them that it's the same thing? For example, you know, this is, this is a, let's say that I'm, that I'm, I'm clapping. I'm going to clap the beats and I'm going to, to sing just a, 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 a basic eighth note, uh, through the 12th A, which is a okay. four, four beat, right? So tick it, tick it, tick it, tick it. Like that. But now, let's say that I'm doing 16 subdivisions in a 4-4. So it's But when it comes to triplets, it's the same. So That 
triplet is in 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 the only difference is how we get to that sound what the, in terms of 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 the, you know what what we use as a template mm -hmm. in this case one template you know in 44 is based on duplex subdivision 44 is based on duplex subdivision mm -hmm. you can subdivide it differently the beat but and then and then the triplets the 12 8 uh is most of the time you know oriented to be uh you know placed and felt as triplets so so it's different i can do the same thing i can put a, a quadruplet on a on a on a 12 8 mm -hmm. and and the same is it will it will be the same as 16 notes in a 4 4. does that make sense yeah that makes sense so basically what you're saying is for for anyone listening but in the 4 4 it's duplet because we have four groups of two eighth notes mm -hmm. as opposed to in 12 8 we're splitting it where we have four like groups of three so that's the that's right. triplet versus the duplet right. um and it's really just in our mind how we're splitting it up it doesn't change how it actually sounds yeah in, in the, the, the important thing is to be able to manipulate to really uh control those subdivision and then and then later so then later you can actually place the rhythms and they and they feel you know much more and many times also coming from one from one uh, subdivision to another, as, as I just played earlier, for example, doing three, four, saka, taka, ti, ta, ta, chike, ta, ta, ti, ta, ta, ti, ta, ta, chike, te, ta, chika, ta, ta, ti, ta, ta, ti, ta, that kind of, 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 of subdivision. And, and then later on, you can do the same thing using accents. Yeah, uh, so if, I mean, if that isn't fundamentally uh, solid in the students first, how are they're not there's no way for them to then get to these advanced rhythms with all yeah. of these rests all of these they're just kind of guessing like you're saying about when to come in mm -hmm. yeah um, and you know one thing is is to have it intellectually mm -hmm. you might have it you might understand it but then your 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 physical ability your your understanding of it in the core of yourself is not there yet so that happens a lot too uh that you understand that you say okay yeah i know it's you know, it's a, such as such. You do three, and then you do four, and it's fine. And you, yeah. But this is not about. This is not data. What I'm talking about is not data. It's it's experience. Yeah. It's, it's ability. A yeah. lot of musicians talk about that sometimes as a difference with like they have good time or groove. Um, maybe they're like very rhythmically accurate, but the feeling of it is very stiff, or the feeling yeah. of it doesn't have that. What you're talking about is it's mm -hmm. not the confidence or the comfortableness in the in the rhythm yeah yeah that's important because music you know between those beats we need air and we need relaxation just the same way you know we we we're talking now we're speaking now if i didn't have that air or you have that air when you talk then it will all sound you know it's like it doesn't make sense we need phrases we need we need to learn how to breathe within the music and within the rhythms, and that's what it makes a sound, you know, such a, a with with such a high quality and enjoyable because that's that's enjoyable. It, we have to learn how to balance, uh, you know, those qualities in in the rhythm. Yeah, uh, for sure. Um, well, we can start getting into some of the the levels that you talk about in in the course, and sure. maybe try through some of the exercises for anyone listening or or watching. They can follow along yeah yeah definitely yeah. well i i picked um just a few uh, examples uh and, and coming uh you know from the beginning mm -hmm. i just i just place a few remix cells on in a, in a sequence of uh, four four uh these remix cells are identified by each beat and for example there is an there is an example very simple you just clap the um the the quarter notes and then and then you just basically seeing a, a pattern which which later we actually uh, uh, we move with the, the order of of those uh, you know remix cells that are placed on the on the on the beats okay for example this is one two three four bang 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 
That's an example in your book. Is that? Yes, that's that's eight, example eight. nine. Nine. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's yeah. that's example nine in the book. Um, and you know, you basically just just clap the beat and, and sing the rhythm, and the same thing goes with ten. And you know, the, that that's the beginning. That's the first level. That's actually the kind of the first e examples that you see in the book. Um, uh, to go through it, and then you know later we have we have later on basically we we're, we're starting working on the upbeats. Okay. Now because of my belief that in order to create a, a, a really strong sense of groove, uh, you we have to really kind of understand and and master in a way. Um, not only playing on the beats, but playing on the off beats. The off beats is, you know, they are different. It's a pool, right? It's, it's a, so you can, you can, um, uh, you can make a strong group, a strong down beats or strong beats. If you have a strong, uh, you know, up beats and vice versa. So for example, one of the first, um, uh, Examples that I have there is actually example. You can see it on on the bottom of example eight, which is right before the example nine. Yeah. Uh, so I have I have uh, you can clap the the beat and then do only up beats, which will be the second and the fourth sixteen notes of each beat. That will be three four. Tang 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 You see the idea is to make that feel as if if you just playing eighth notes as if you play tan 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 you see yes so it basically what you're doing is it's still the same difference in space as as a want like downbeat and an upbeat but because displaced it by a 16th note it should feel just as comfortable is what you're saying but uh, yes, for most musicians, it's not going to, unless they've worked on this. <laughs> <laughs> or yeah, making that switch would have been really difficult. Yeah. You know, how natural that was for you to just switch in the moment. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's important. I mean, you know, you know, I've been doing this for many years, mm -hmm. and I've, I've studied this. I've, I've I've gone deeply, not only in how uh, I was able to to get to the level of being able to do it, you know, relax. But how can I teach this? How can I make someone else that doesn't come, for example, from my same culture, mm -hmm. who doesn't have my same probably passion that I have for so many years in, in rhythm, uh, you know, about rhythm and stuff like that. How can I, how can I make that person be able to do it? So all, you know, the, the, the explaining all this is, is very uh, important and the ability of being able to do it so they can hear it, they can experience it, that is possible. And um, it's just things that, you know, uh, they are very crucial. They are crucial because, for example, when you're talking about syncopation, when you're talking about upbeats, you're basically talking about everything that is not played on the beats. Mm -hmm. So now we have a tendency, you know, depending on the culture, of using the beats as the most favorite, as the, as the most fundamental. Uh, I have a different mindset, or let me say, I have a, two different approaches. One which is, you know, the one that everybody knows, which is, you know, you have a beat, and then you place the rhythms inside those beats, right? Uh, and then the other approach is you play the subdivision and the rhythm enhances as a as a result the beat comes out mm. you see that's different that's different because when i'm playing i'm not play i'm not playing to a beat i'm creating the beat because of what i'm playing the beat is a result of the of the rhythms that i play mm -hmm. 
it's not the it, so it's it's a different approach uh the way you perceive it and and you and you uh, and you manipulate that information yeah that's interesting because it, it could kind of also be applied in the case of harmony as well you're creating the harmony based on the notes that you're laying out it's not you're not playing and fitting to that mm -hmm. uh, yes uh, yeah it's yeah it's the same thing yeah but in rhythm really does does makes it you know i mean harmony too but in rhythm it does just makes a huge difference uh, when you give that power that power to uh to to the rhythmic content that you play and not you know kind of giving the power to the beat because then what happens with that is like there is an unbalanced situation and then and then you never get to really uh you know focus on understand the importance of subdivision hmm. how you're going to subdivide that beat is how you're going to make that beat feel so when you're thinking of the subdivision or maybe you're not like when you're playing and creating that beat are you thinking of how it's subdivided or i mean maybe at this point it's so natural for you you're you're really just kind of experiencing and feeling where you're placing these different beats how would a, a student kind of start to approach that kind of subdivision yeah, I for example, if you do, if you have that same that same uh, material that we were just doing, uh, uh, playing the second and the fourth sixteen notes, right? Inside yourself, you have to be feeling or singing inside mm -hmm. yourself the subdivision. Ta 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 ta
タンタンタンタンタンタンタンタンタンタンタンタンタンタンタンタンタンタンタンタンタンタンタンタンタンタンタンタンタンタンタンタンタンタンタンタンタンタンタンタンタンタンタンタンタンタンタンタンタンタンタンタンタンタンタンタンタンタンタンタンタンタンタンタンタンタンタンタンタンタンタンタンタンタンタンタンタンタンタン Have your students work with the metronome, or maybe there's some things you see students do incorrectly or correctly with using a metronome? Well, I think a, a, you know, a metronome is a tool,、mm -hmm. and you know, it, it could be a, a great tool, and as, as every other tool, it could be very damaging too. I, I've, I've seen people that have improved because they have、uh, you know, used the metronome, but they're always relying on themselves and they always you know, keep the. the You know, the, the idea in their mind that they are not going to be relying on that metronome when they play.、Mm -hmm. uh, so, that, which is important. And what happened with the metronome is that because it's such a, a mechanic pulse that is there constant like that, it makes you rely it, 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 you know, to it. And, and then at some point, you think that everything, everything is in relationship to that. And then, and then you don't really learn much of how to manipulate that space、uh, in between. It's just a different, it just makes things a little bit、uh, almost as if, if it were、uh, inside of a, of a, of a how, you, how, you, how would you say that? It's almost like,、um, like compressed.、Mm -hmm. mm. you know, it's, it's, and so. It's, it's harder to actually make you know, the, the, the metronome really feel relaxed. But it's a great tool. I, I will advise it to those you know, who, who, who have problems and, and, and have you know, this challenge of, of keeping, but you know, thinking always ahead, thinking that you, you cannot always rely on it. You know, to me, basically, the metronome is like an aspirin. You take it if you need it. If you don't need it, why would you take it? I mean, it won't kill you.、Mm -hmm. it, taking an aspirin every day, it won't kill you. But why would you do that if you don't need it?、Mm -hmm. Right? So it's the same thing. You, you, you use it when you have a headache, and the same thing. You use it you know, when you have this issue. Then you move on. The, 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 to me, the, the op. The optimum situation is when you're able to do it by yourself. Yeah. yeah.、Um, so, we were talking about what you consider the level one. What, what then becomes level two for the student? Yeah, level two is, is、uh, it gets more.、Um, well, let me, let me just give you another.、Uh, yeah. Go, it, it, that example that, that, I, that, I, that I played for you before,、uh, the one in,、um, that was、uh, nine, right? Yeah, nine. Example nine. Now we're going to play, for example, uh, uh, example 19. And now this one is the same,、um, is the same but with the clave pattern. Great. Yeah. So, so for example, this is, the, this is the pattern. Pang, 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 pang. Pang, 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 pang. So I'm, I'm placing it now. There are two layers, and this other layer is a rumba clave in 3 2. Could you just explain? I mean, even just so we're clear, what, what the difference between the claves or the 3 2 2 3、um, is rumba clave the same when people just say, oh, we're playing a clave? Just maybe talk a little bit about clave. Yeah, well, the clave, the clave, there are two basic claves. One, well, there are many、mm -hmm. claves. And we, we have to, I always have to say that we, we wouldn't be able to do any of this if it weren't for our Rikmi motherland of Africa. And, and we really have to bring that awareness,、uh, you know, because there are different, different claves. In Africa, there are Many claves that they don't start on the beat, they start here, they're displaced. There they are, they are cycles that are longer than just、mm -hmm. one or two or, or four bars, right? So, 
But in this case, we have two fundamental claves. One is called song clave, and the other one is called rumba clave. Now the song clave is tan 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 tan, which you also can subdivide it, you know, twice faster, like tan 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 tan. Then you have the rumba clave, which the third note, there are five notes in the clave. The, th the third note, the one in the middle, then it, 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 it gets shift into a uh, one sixteen note or one eighth note, depending how you are going to interpret this or relate it to the pulse. So the rumba clave is tang, 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 or tang, tang. Tan, 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 right? Yeah. Now, these two claves, they're, they're, they're originally 3 2 pattern. They start on the beat, but they can also be placed and played and interpreted starting in the middle of the pattern. And that happens because of the relationship of other patterns or the relationship of that rhythm or do, that rhythm with other patterns in relationship to her, a harmonic uh, change or a specific song. So, so you can start the same two rhythms either on the three side or on the two side. That doesn't make this the, that rhythm different. Or oh, this is a different clave because it's starting in two three. No, it's the same clave starting somewhere else. Okay. Starting on the in the middle of it. That's mm -hmm. about it. It's the same. It's the same rhythm. Okay. So that's what it goes for the clave. And now, you know, after you know, obviously in the book, I I introduced to the clave. I explained that. I I I you know graphically, mm -hmm. I put you know the contents and it's called three two and two three because on the if you you know if you subdivide it in half, on the on the first side of it you have a three. Um, three notes and on the second uh, part of it you have two notes and then if you switch that then you have two and three that's what it is that's really what it is uh, it's just a, a terminology mm -hmm. uh, uh, to make to make the clave you know uh, in a way um, you know it, 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 a terminology that clears up the fundamental so we can talk about it so I can yeah say yeah we can talk about it and we can you can organize it intellectually. This yeah. came about, and, and I did a research on this uh, when I was doing my the first book, A World of Rhythmic Possibility. And apparent, apparently, it came about in the time of Mario Bausa, who was in New York, uh, uh, needing many times, uh, you know, arrangers to do uh, arranging the music of some of his music, some of the music that he wants to play do arrangements and stuff like that, but these arrangers, they didn't know anything about Cuban music, so he has to actually explain them, mm. uh, you know, the rhythmic and the relationship between the clave and the bass line and stuff like that. And so that's how, as far as I know, I might be wrong, but as far as I could research on on how this terminology of 3-2 or 2-3 came about, uh, it, it came, uh, you know, uh, after many questions that that might be uh, one of the answers. Yeah. Um, we had some questions from some drummers even about clave and when they would decide to use one over the other or they might be playing a bunch of different Latin, you know, Latin music that really encompasses a bunch of different cultures and styles and maybe not know which clave they're supposed to be playing, what pattern, what... Is there any way of knowing which clave goes with which kind of music well it's it's really um there is a there is a way to to explain a little bit of how it works for example in 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 in, in my first book also in the world of rhythmic possibilities um i explain how how the 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 contour in a way of the of the uh of the bass uh tumbao line works with the clave for example, I, I put an example of 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 how the uh, the bass line goes up on the two side of it and how it goes down on the three side of it. 
For example, I give you an example quickly. Okay. So, one, two, three, four, pong, pong, ping, pong, 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 ping, pong, 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 ping, pong, 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 ping, pong, pong. So I'm going up, kong, kong, king, tang, tong, ch, kong, ch, king, ch, chang, kong. See, I'm going down. Uh, and that is helpful very helpful for people that's a that's a basic you know uh, to bow uh, for the bass line and and as well as you know any harmonic instrument where you're going to do the you know the one four five uh you know progression right so that's helpful but at the end of the run if you if you're writing something original if you bringing a new material which is you know in a way open you will really have to uh, use to to see how that feels. How, you know, it's it's it's, it's hard to really uh, make that that judgment um, without knowing uh, how would would it sound. It's just it's just um, I don't know how to, to to really put it in words that specific uh, you know situation. It, it is not a formula. That's what, what I'm trying to say is that there is not a right formula for it uh, because it all depends if you're doing original material, of course. It all depends of, of your bass line, of your, the sequence of, of, the, of the course and stuff like that, uh, the remix sequence in relationship to the clave. So it, it all, you know, balance, you know, it's, 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 it's just various, you know. Well, I think that's a great point you bring up even relating it to the tune bow is you'd have to think as the drummer, as the composer, how does this rhythm fit with the bass line? You know, does it go along with it? Um, mm -hmm. So that's yeah. one approach people could take. Mm -hmm. Because the opposite of that is pong, pong, ping, pong, 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 ping. Actually, that's, that's, that's the right way. I, it's hard for me to do, to do actually the wrong way. I mean, the way that it sounds a yeah. little bit awkward. Yeah. Uh, let me let me think about it. I have to actually make an effort to make it to to to. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, here. Te pong pong ping pong 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 ping pong pong no pong ping pong pong. So it just sounds. It doesn't have the flow to it because it's lining yeah. up almost too much. Exactly. It exactly. You it got it. Flow. Too many exactly. points of contact, yeah. Exactly. But it's the same thing that happens in the rhythm of Wawanko, for example, which is, okay. you know, a well-known rhythm. Like, actually, what happened before, I have heard recordings of, you know, uh, you know, early recordings of Rumba, of the Wawanko, and, you know, they play it actually what is now supposed to be wrong. Mm. But it, it sounds like this, so ping, ping, tong. Ting, ting, tong. Ting, ting, tong. If you do that nowadays, you are, you know, you're like people that knows about it. They just start rolling their eyes to you, right? Because now, if you see the same, the same thing happen, it, everything is in one side of it. All the notes, tong, ting, ting, tong. Nothing happens here mm -hmm. on this side. See, tong, ting, ting, tong. Tong, ting, ting, tong. You know, but then if if you put it the way we actually play it now, or we've been playing it for a while already, is pong, ping, ping, pong. Pong, ping, ping, pong. So the, the intricacy of the pattern is not aligned like that. It's actually, you know, interconnected in a way. So 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 there's more balance. There is more balance in in this approach, pong, ping, ping, pong, pong, ping, ping, pong. So it's basically the same thing that happens, the relationship between the clave and the bass line. Yeah, that's a great point. I'm glad you kind of clarified that for people uh, listening. Yeah. Great. Um, so then where does this go from level, like we were talking yeah. about, level one to so, level two? So, okay, if at the level one, in the level one, we're really dealing with, you know, getting a, a strong subdivision and phrases of one bar. Okay. one bar phrases then on the second on the second um 
and then we also doing the same thing this we we do all in all levels we 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 uh, we focus on duplet subdivision and triplets so there there are also uh, other uh, you know triplets examples on the first level the second level and the um, the third level as well so but the second the, the second one is already let's say um, dealing with the two of them in one sequence so you're not doing only one thing uh, you know for for a while mm -hmm. you, you you basically balancing the two of them so there is an example this is just an example I'm going to actually play the two lines I'm not expecting uh, the students to do this uh, some of them they they can you know we, we all don't have the same uh, you know facilities mm -hmm. uh, to start with uh, but but this one you play um, one bar of 4-4 four, four and one bar of 12-8 so you're going from that duplet into the triplet and then you you, you basically repeated that 4-4 four, four, uh, bar and that 12-8 twice so this is an example this is example 63 this is the first example of uh, level 2 right one, two, three, four, pa pam pang, 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 pa pam pang, 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 pa pam pang, 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 pa pam pang, 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 pang. Yeah. Right? So, you know, you're going from that duplet 16 subdivision into the triplets. One person is supposed to be doing what I do, uh, you know, clapping and the other person what I do, you know, singing. They all can clap, uh, you know, each of them they can clap or tap the beat and then clap. So it would, bow, it would be chica can can chican chican chin can chica can can chican chican chin can chi 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 ka chi 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 ka chi 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 ka. So, so they both kind of interacting. They they synchronizing rhythmically to make that uh, you know that uh, rhythmic uh, you know uh, strong. Yeah, I can see how as as a group that then helps the students feel the different rhythms and become the yeah. one. Be, but yeah. also as yourself, as you just demonstrated, as an individual, getting that kind of rhythmic independence and being able to sing yeah. and clap the different lines. Yeah, because the thing is that you're not only you're not only playing, you're listening. Mm -hmm. So the ability of you to interact with someone is not the same ability that you will do, you know, in a group, in a room by yourself, trying to aim for one single line by yourself. Now you have interaction. Now you have to listen in order to fit your own mm -hmm. rhythm and to make it, you know, uh, feel good, you know, but to see it as a, as a overall in a way, you know, not only you know, I always say to the students, if you're playing, if, if you're really, uh, um, if you, you're playing with someone who's not strong in rhythm and you're playing really strong and you're not trying to uh, identify and synchronize with that person, even when you're playing right, you're playing wrong. Mm. Right. Because the idea at that moment, your responsibility at that moment is to make the whole thing sound good. So what are you going to do when you're dealing with the, in that, you know, circumstance? You have to really make it, you know, uh, decisions of, of maybe uh, have a more elasticity on your playing so that it can really, you know, match and synchronize with the other uh, person. I'm saying this is in a, in a very, you know, uh, very specific scenario that you cannot, you know, have a conversation with a person and maybe get in an agreement. Oh, why don't you try this? And you know, so so it's important to be alert and to and to really understand that sometimes you're right, but depending on the circumstances, that rightness can make it wrong. Yeah, no, that's a good point, and it, I think it's a lot easier to maybe kid yourself if you're practicing the rhythms just individually because you're not really aware of the spots while you're doing something this complex that you're maybe a little bit off yes um, but in in the with people doing it in a group it's going to be pretty clear if it's not lining up yeah 
No, the good thing about it is, as I as I as I as I mentioned, um, you know, before, you all you also have that that uh, 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 that possibility of leaning to your colleagues if you're having some difficulties. You lean and you listen and you say, okay, okay, I got the first one, I got the second. You know, I've seen it. You know, in, in front of me, the students, you know, having difficulties doing and and then because we are in a group and everybody's doing and and you you become much more enthusiastic and try to imitate which is a great you know a skill to start you know anything basically so you know that it, it really helps the, the to, to kind of do it in, in a community however you can always you know you can definitely do as much as as possible to improve yourself and to be conscious as long as you are conscious and aware uh you know that what to work and how to work uh, you can definitely, you know, do a, a lot of this also by yourself. Uh, well, that's one of the great things that I like about with the book is you have the audio examples. So they can mm -hmm. do it with this, these audio examples and, and get at least some of that uh -huh. uh, benefit. It's yes. not just them reading the, the, you know, the graphical notation and just clapping it to themselves and hoping yeah. they got it. That's a great point that you, that, that you, that I wanted to add a little bit of that because I, I'm really, uh, um, how can I say strong uh, in telling the students that they should not they should they should learn these rhythms after you read it a, a few times just just don't re don't look at it anymore you have it you, you should you should be able to learn yeah. one major rhythm or two major rhythm or at some point in this uh, book for example which we also challenge the, the, the rhythmic memory because uh, you know many for some reason there's a tendency of you know this beat playing and mm -hmm. things like that that makes rhythm such a it, it just minimizes the quality of what rhythm could be mm -hmm. it just it just points it just points it to a to a very specific uh quality which is you know just one of the many and it's just this steadiness repetitive cycle of the same rhythm with no variation or maybe just little variation and you know we can see it in a lot of you know kind of pop music now and stuff like that they just you know um so so it's really challenging you know nowadays to find you know something that you have to learn that is like a bars rhythmic uh, uh you know sequence or something like that it's not just a cycle it's it's actually yeah it's exactly yeah so um Anyways, we challenge that in, in the second um, uh, on the second level. Also, we go into into that. I, I give you an example of that. Okay. Uh, of that, uh, one of the sequences. There are there are four sequences that are long. They are that, well long. They are six bars. Mm -hmm. And and I'm gonna just 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 do one. Actually, just tapping the beat. This is in in triplets. It's in twelve eight. And uh, the the first two bars. It's actually a, a Rimi palindrome that I that I made up uh, for a song a while back, maybe probably more than ten years ago. So my uh, my first uh, record about the monks, it has this song. It's called Tumba Francesa, and and I made this uh, a remix sequence uh, that that goes as follows: tan 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 tan. Tan 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 tan. So it's a two bar, right? Two bars of twelve eight. So based on that, then I create this this sequence, which it goes like this: tan 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 and starts all over so it's a six bar and you know it just to me the the whole thing about it is to really point out where are the difficulties for example the difficulty on the second partial of that triplet Tang 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 
tan, ta 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 tan, 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 o de ser, tac, 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 you know, to, to make that strong, uh, and, you know, and confident and, 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 and tasteful, uh, you know, it just, it just takes a, a, a great care, you know, deal of care. You have to be careful, you know, and, and do it. Uh, so anyways, it, you know, it just challenged the memory also. And it challenged the memory to the point that that same sequence, we have it in the, in the group actually clapping that sequence and singing uh, part of the melody. You can sing like a blues, right? Like a 12 bar blues, because this is a six bar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can, you can you can sing a blues whatever melodic melody that you like of a blues or a song that you have you know that you you can make it up also uh, you can loop for example if you have uh, the bass line of of um, or, or the that beginning of the of footprints right mm -hmm. we i have that example in the book w with the melody but I'm, let's just present it now just to make it a little bit more uh easier uh and to access you can have tom pam 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 pa com pam 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 right so you have the the rhythmic uh sequence and you can play it uh while you sing that so one two three four pam 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 ping pa pam 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 ping pam 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 ping pa pam 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 ping Pom 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 ping, pa pom 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 ping, pom 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 ping, pa pom 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 ping, pom 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 ping, pa pom 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 ping, pom 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 ping, pa pom 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 ping, pa pom 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 ping. I start all over, right? So, you know, I'm doing it now. I've done it a hundred thousand times. So, you know, it's like, what the hell is going on? But, you know, no, but you can hear it. You can hear what you talked about. As soon as you demonstrate the first pattern, even that challenging our rhythmic memory, as soon as you put that on top, yeah, yeah that's different. We got to practice that, but yeah, sure. those elements, yeah. Yeah, clear. and you can do it. You, you can go just loop one bar hmm. and see the, 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 the relationship of the rhythm with the, with the bass line or with that melody that you're singing. That's an example, you know. At that point, so there you're working on the rhythmic memory and some of these longer phrases, then the level three, I mean, even from what I just looked at in here, it gets, it's pretty high level. So yeah, what's that jump then? Well, the jump is, you know, I, I, I always, I'm always curious. I'm, and, I, and I believe there are many people like me. Mm -hmm. I believe that there are musicians that do not want to stay playing the same thing for the rest of their life. And they want to, um, you know, improve themselves and, and at least to the level of understanding, to the level of, of being aware of what is happening, where I don't understand something because of the level of difficulty and whatever. So I explain a little bit, uh, you know, different kind of groupings. Um, uh, w the third level goes deep into uh, ad meters, mm -hmm. into playing ad meters and stuff like that. They're, the numerology, as the way I like to call it, which is, you know, the use of tools and trees uh, to develop uh, at meters and, and stuff like that, you know, like five, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, or, or one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, and, mm -hmm. and explain all that. And then the very end of that, of that chapter of the whole book, then it would be to actually do something in four, four steady, like for example, the clave pattern, and do something up meter at the same time simultaneously. Now, as I say before, I know this is difficult and it requires, you know, a, a great deal of of, uh, of discipline, focus, and the independence of being able to sing and clap at the same time, different rhythms in different meters. But, you know, at some point when you do it in a class or when you have a colleague that you can, you know, interact with, then you can have the colleague play the steady pattern in 4-4 four, four, and then you can do the ad meter and then when the sequence comes back, then you switch, mm -hmm. right? So it's, it's spontaneously, it's not, it's not counting or anything. Just, so, so the good thing about this is, is it also 
increases that ability of you being able to play but being able to hear to listen to what others are playing you don't want to be on your own you know that, that's the same thing i say if you're on your own without listening to the others then then that's not right so the the, the, the idea of, of the music and the rhythm and, and the rhythm synchronicity is about the connection hmm. yeah i can see that even in the way you're explaining it with with uh without the counting or the ianda and the trip ballet, like all of the the focus or the emphasis that you have with these rhythms is so much on the feeling of it and internalizing it and not yeah. the, like counting the it's this e and then this and and i was right because mine was exactly yeah i mean i i, I have a lot of students that they do those yeah, yeah. I, I don't understand i never done this I, I you know the same with the aspirant you only take it when you need it and um but you know, it's that's helpful in the in intellectual level, mm -hmm. in the level in the level of understanding what is it that you're doing. But eventually, when you get into the playing, to the action, you will have to put that in the side. Otherwise, the music will suffer. And I've told I've told many students about it because I tell them, okay, play this rhythm, and and they keep saying and do and three and two and four and you know all this and 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 do I, I don't I don't I don't understand that and I think it adds a, a level of complexity in people's mind also mm. which is unnecessary. Yeah, it's but not I, complexity in the actual way that is helpful in learning different rhythms. It's it's making it difficult just for the sake of resistance. Yeah, it's the same thing like as if you're playing and you're counting at the same time. Mm. How many things could you do at the same time playing? counting interacting listening improvising how, how many things could you do it, it at the same time it's, no they're all suffering if you're doing exactly that. Yeah. so the, the 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 less stuff you have in your brain at that moment in terms of of of, of keeping up stuff the more freedom you have you know i, I think you're, you're an example of that for anyone who, who maybe sees that as the only approach as, as having the rhythmic freedom and synchronicity and just being able to approach any of these complex rhythms without having to have that kind of like count count like running in the in your mind yeah because that's you know that that affects it really affects the fluidity of of of, of, of the rhythm I mean you know as I say to a start in an intellectual level in order to understand it if someone is really having difficulties but but I think that's created because someone has not explained that person how subdivision and rhythm works mm -hmm. in a so that he can picture it better uh when 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 he sees you know a rhythmic a, a notation you know you know at some point because of your practice and because you're you know you, you, the routine of of reading music is the same as if you're reading you know words you you have then a a a, 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 a photographic memory I don't have to go to a rhythm like a tantita thing and do and through and three and in the and the, you know, you just see the rhythm, pa, this is the way it sounds. This is, as you read here, rhythmic, you know, you don't go rhythmic, uh -huh. you know, you, you right. see the picture and you say rhythmic. Mm -hmm. That's the same thing when you see a, a, a rhythm on the, on the chart or, you know, a chord or whatever. Oh, this is what it is. It's, it's, it's a photographic memory stuff. Right, so I try to, you know, to to really advise students, you know, to try to get to that level on the reading, so they don't have to be doing that. De, 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 de. That's as I say, that's it might be helpful at the very, uh, you know, basic level. Yeah, no, that's great. Well, Stephanie, so I want to be respectful of your time, and this has given students a, a ton to work on. Where, yeah, where can they actually get get the book? They can get the book on my website. Okay, uh, it's Daphne Song. Uh, music Daphne some music dot com and that's you know you can get this book that is that just came out uh, recently mm -hmm. uh, for non drummers but all the drummers are welcome I always say that because that doesn't imply that drummers <laughs> some drummers <laughs> some drummers would be it would be uh, really uh, grateful to to go through it and and it's very helpful it's challenging for for drummers also don't think that that is not challenging for them. But anyways, yeah, they can find it on my website and you know, or they can go into my, uh, you know, social media 
uh, the Instagram or the Facebook mm -hmm. and, and follow me and, and you know, I'm, I'm mostly... we'll, link, we'll link all of that below so people can yeah. even access all of that. So. Beautiful. And, you know, thank you. Thank you guys for giving me the, the opportunity to do this interview and to make it, you know, uh, you know, available to everyone there that is, you know, that is interesting to, to learn and improve their, their musical abilities. I no, thank it. you so much for sharing. Yeah, this is been great. Thank you, Daphne. I mean, we, we, we need, we, when we read your book and we checked it out, I mean, this is stuff that we felt for a very long time we were lacking. And, and stuff that's missing in, in just the education for non, you know, non drummers. And when I heard that you had made something like this, I mean, we all should, you know, benefit from this. So yeah. thank you. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Have a great one, Japanese. Bye. You too.